everyone welcome to the withering effect episode 109 today's date is august 22nd 2021 and i am duds or duds versus known to the rest of the interwebs and i'm jimbo you may know me as jimbo slice 23 so we'll start off with what you've done this week duds pranks i've noticed <laughs> i've been in the pranking mood yeah so i needed payback you and para pranked me a while ago mm-hmm. and uh, I, I had been biding my time until it was time for revenge, and that was this weekend. Well, really this week, so. I haven't got to see it yet, but I saw the picture. Yeah, because I, I posted the thumbnail in the uh, Withering Effect chat. Yeah, we do, We like to share our thumbnails with each other just for suggestions, you know. Mm-hmm. And I saw, I see my base there, <laughs> my mm-hmm. storage room, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but it makes sense. I get it. <laughs> I mean, speaking of well, I mean, the episode will be out tomorrow for us, but it'll be Monday for everyone else. So when everyone else hears this, the episode should have come out like two or three days ago. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, so it's not really a spoil. Well, it will be for you because you don't know the extent of the prank because you haven't been in your base yet. Yes. You just know your base has been pranked. I can tell mm-hmm. you what we did to Para's base. Okay. So you go to Para's base, and in the middle of his lake says big tree here just put a sign and he kind of outlined where he was gonna put the tree and i was talking to omni because omni obviously helped me do the pranking you'll see that in the episode uh let's just do a really giant ugly birch tree right here and uh, he's like yeah cool let's do that and so this tree's like 100 blocks tall and i want to say it was 15 like 12 to 15 wide for the trunk <laughs> It used an entire shulker box of birchwood, and then we used like three or four shulker boxes full of slime to use the leaves. It's just this massive, ugly, ugly tree. Huh. Is that what you used? Yeah, slime and birch. Oh, see, I didn't notice the birch. I have to check that out again. The thumbnail is really dark. Yeah, yeah, you can't tell on the thumbnail. Yeah, but I had made mention that I was like, oh... Para and Jimbo's prank looked pretty at least, and now here I am with the ugliest tree ever made. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, well. He's going to rip this down the second he sees it anyway, so. Yeah, and I guess my the prank you did on me isn't technically ugly. No, and it's the second you get into starting to use your storage room, you're going to rip it down too. Right. Yours is more of a prank of you not being there for so long. Mm, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, you left your base abandoned, so... Mm -hmm. we made it look abandoned right again none of these pranks were uh hard cleanup stuff slime is going to be super easy you just punch it and it breaks birchwood's going to take a little bit but the slimes you and parame took me about two and a half hours to get away anyway so yeah that took a while (laughs) i'm I'm probably not going to take that long clean mine up looking at the picture no yeah if you take longer than 15 minutes to clean your prank up you're doing something wrong yeah I am going to make a a scene out of it, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. I will say, your prank only took me and Omni about 20 minutes to put together. Para's prank took about two hours in recording time. Mm. And I had to condense those two hours to like a minute and a half time lapse. Yeah. So that, that one clip took a lot of work. This whole episode, so episode 38 for me, is probably one of my most edited videos. And I don't think anyone's going to be able to even tell that it's highly edited because I I took a lot of time trying to make the edits uh, smooth and precise. And I'll take like a five minute clip of me talking and I ended up chopping it in multiple places to make it only like two minutes talking. Hmm. I'm going to look for that. Yeah. See if I notice. See if you can see it. You'll you'll find a spot where it's just a little bit jerky. You'll see my guy change... Uh, direction just the smallest amount yeah i think i know what you mean the editing that you've done yeah i do it occasionally Mm -hmm. i can't get my words right (laughs) but other than that i've been working on my streaming stuff i've been wanting to get back into streaming (laughs) that was a little bit more ref because i i do all my overlays and stuff like that by hand and it it doesn't come naturally to me it takes me a lot of like designing a thumbnail for a season takes me a good day or two to put together so overlays do the same especially when i'm trying to like 
have numbers moving on the screen and make it look interesting without covering up a lot of the fun stuff to look at and throw in a Suzy cam that uses an odd dimension because I'm using an old webcam that's at an angle. Yeah, it's going to take a little more time than a thumbnail. Yeah, I've, I've got new color schemes and everything in place now. It's just getting the couple design works done. And it's coming up with the new stream time. Uh, Saturday mornings got really rough for me because I was doing a lot of housework. Mm. And Saturday mornings are a good time to do all the housework and stuff like that. Thinking about maybe going back to Friday nights, that's where I used to stream a lot. Okay. We'll see. We'll find out. I've got, I've got a fly in my office. Hang on. Get it. It's like the first fly this summer in my house. Uh, what the heck? I'd rather have flies than mice and snakes. Oh, dude, I got those mice figured out. My house is spotless. Nice. Besides the fly, the one fly. <laughs> Besides, I know what the fly came for. It came from I was grilling steak and I was in and out of the back door all, all afternoon. Yeah. That's where that came from. But other than that, I played a lot of dungeons, but we're going to save a lot of the dungeon talk for our post show. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to listen to that, I think it's a dollar a month for the post show, which is a pretty good deal. Yeah, we're going to be talking dungeons here in the future. Mm -hmm. We'll have a dungeons uh, developer on the show here's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to get in this. We want to get some dungeons in. We want to experience this game to the fullest. There's been so many DLCs that come out with it. I haven't played any of the DLCs. Uh, you've been playing a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I tried to download or tried to buy it just now. And I couldn't for some reason because of my card was acting up. Some kind of error. Maybe it's operator error, probably. But I'll figure it out, and uh, hopefully we can stream it. Yeah. We were talking about that. Maybe get a stream in. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, what have you been up to this week, Jimbo? I like dominated that conversation for like the last, last eight minutes. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, we were just covering your week, but uh, I, I've still yet to record anything. Oh. Yeah, well, we just got <laughs> finished up at work with our big job that we were doing where I was working weekends and late days, and mm -hmm. we finally finished it. And now we're just clean. We cleaned it up this week. And uh, this weekend would be ideally uh, the ideal time for me to record. It was my 10 year anniversary mm. with my wife. So we went to Pittsburgh, stayed up there in a real nice hotel. And then, uh, you know, went out to eat, just had a good time out at Pittsburgh. And uh, that's pretty much where I spent my Friday and Saturday. And here we are Sunday. Went this morning to a bow shoot and now recording. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of cleaning up to do, too, because I have a my fantasy football league starting up. I have a party at the house with everyone involved in the league. Oh, man. Yeah, so I got to get ready for that, too. A lot on my plate right now, but I have an idea. I talked to you a little bit about, you know, the episode I plan on coming out to where I actually come back and... There will be some Duds Jimbo collabing. Yes, yes. We kind of have it figured out. I do want to mess with the, you know, the storyline a little bit, but I have things in place already. I already messed up like seven minutes. I lost seven minutes of recording time when my computer went down and I lost a bunch of stuff, so... I have to start from scratch, and it's just, uh, it's a hassle. But I have a pretty good idea of what to do, and I'm going to really take my time and edit. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, I, I'm going to try to, I don't know, bring back those different editing techniques that I was doing where I had, I don't know, some of my best episodes. And I, I want to try to bring that back and use that a lot more Yeah, in this episode. So it's, I want to make it something like a mega episode. I might even mention this last week, <laughs> to be honest. You did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a little bit longer than usual, but I want to cover everything that I missed, you know, that people missed out on. They didn't miss out on much because I really haven't been on, but what you did miss out <laughs> on, I would like to cover it and get a lot of work done. That's the whole reason you got pranked, by the way, is because you were on at one point and then, well, it was you and Omni. I hopped on, said hi. Omni said hi, and you didn't say anything back to me. I didn't. Yeah, 10 minutes later, you signed off. And I went, Jimbo didn't acknowledge me in chat, and then Omni's like, okay, let's prank him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Well, I think, it's, I, said, I think I said we should prank him, and Omni's like, yes. 
He was all for some pranking. Avni did that too. He said hi, and I didn't even notice. Like I, when I get on the surfer, <laughs> I immediately say hi to people. And then when people jump on, sometimes I don't notice that they're jumping on. It's down in the corner. I'm dazed and confused out, you know, in my mind, pretty much just not paying attention. You ignored me and the walrus. You deserve to be pranked. Yeah, I ignored him too. Maybe not that time, but either earlier that day or another day. But I noticed he said like three things to me in chat and I didn't say anything back. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> Obney's on. Didn't realize it. No. But yeah, when I would jump on, it'd be like, you know, to plan things, to plan out mm -hmm. what's going on next. You know, maybe throw some blocks down, get an idea of what the next build is going to be or how things are going to look. But besides that, I, you know, I haven't been on and been playing much, but plan on changing that here soon. Yeah. Before we move into the news, I wanted to bring up something that my roommate came across. So he was coming to me saying, my game's crashing. And I was like, okay, well, you're doing something wrong because he's had more Minecraft issues and glitches than I've ever seen out of any Minecraft player of all time. And he plays Java, right? Right. He's like, this happened when I tried to build this farm. And I was like, no, that didn't happen. That's physically impossible. The game can't do that. So anyways, when he told me about this glitch, I, I made him physically repeat the process and show me what was going on. And I was able to break it down into there is a real glitch, and it's when you're trading with villagers. So your villager is not at max level yet. So he was trading glass with a cartographer. And then whenever that cartographer XP uh, would, I don't want to say maxed out because it's not maxed out, would become full and ready to level up. You know how they get the little purple swirls over their head? Yeah. Whenever that happened, the game would crash. Mm. And I thought it was really weird. And I was like, okay, it doesn't happen until physically those purple swirl swirls popped over the head. If you could jump out of the villager, you could jump back into the villager to trade before those purple swirls and you were fine. But if you saw the purple swirls, done. Game crashes. And found out it's an Optifine thing. Ah. If he would, if he got out of Optifine, went into just the regular mode or regular launcher, worked fine. So we went ahead and updated his Optifine to the newest, it's still a pre-release, but the newest Optifine and the glitch still happened. Ah. So there's something with Optifine and Villager trading. If anyone's having that issue, try taking Optifine off. Now, it's not happening if a Villager is already maxed out. If you've already trade or traded with them a ton, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter because his villagers that are max level aren't a problem. All of my villagers are max level and I couldn't replicate it either. But it seems to be whenever you trade with them enough to level them up that it would crash. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, pretty inconvenient. Yeah. At first, I thought it was like all the XP you get from the villagers because he had it where none of the XP could get out. I was like, you understand there's a ton of X XP orbs behind these villagers. He's like, nah. And you break the chest and or the work table in front of them. And you just hear do 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 do. It's like yeah, the villagers give you a lot of XP now. Mm -hmm. Don't leave that sitting there. Yeah, if you guys are having game crashes with trading with villagers and you're using Optifine, get rid of Optifine and see if that fixes it for you. Yeah, or shout out to Optifine, fix your glitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I couldn't replicate it on mine, but all my villagers are max level. So, and I wasn't gonna get a new villager to breed just to test the glitch and then kill. Yeah, right. But anyways, so we move on to the news because we had some news. Yeah, got a little bit. <laughs> Literally like one day before we put out last week's episode. Here's Experimental Snapshot 4. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kind of have a feeling that's going to happen again by the time you guys hear us talk about 4. Experimental Snapshot 5 will probably have come out. <laughs> probably. But one of the things we mentioned last week got changed. Uh, we talked about how we liked desert temples being partially buried. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. They're they're back to being buried. They're not uh they're not super buried and they're not level dependent, I don't think. No, it doesn't sound like it. Doesn't look like it, at least. Yeah. Other changes is desert and jungle temples won't be spawning on water anymore. Yeah, it doesn't uh, I doubt you see them on like cliffs or mountain type of, you know, yeah. high elevation possibly. But 
I don't see him at a certain Y level every time. At least that's what it looks like. Correct. Uh, snowy slopes are less dirty for real this time. So more snow, less dirt. It's, we should get prettier stuff. I think stone is actually taking place of the dirt now that I'm thinking about it. I think that's what they had said. Looks like the higher up, the more ice you'll find also. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to find any dirt up there. Well, one of the things they had changed too was the, what I call the freeze line, where you start to get snow accumulating on like treetops and buildings and everything. Mm -hmm. They actually raised that up higher. So you wouldn't have to worry about snow as much landing on your builds or treetops or something like that. Because I remember that was an issue uh, Ripple Season 2. My base wasn't actually that high in the air, but the top of it always got snow on it. So I was placing string around to keep snow from getting in trees and stuff. Yeah, and sometimes, actually, most of the time, snow can be more annoying than rain. Yeah. You know, rain can be... It can mess up your view and stuff, but it's not going to leave a physical layer of water on the ground. Right. Like snow will. Mm -hmm. So that can be annoying. I'm, I'm, that's a good change. Yeah, no. I like that change. Yeah, in the warmer biomes, like that uh, surface freezing is just gone. They went ahead and got rid of it. So like desert, badlands, savanna, uh, I don't think it matters at what height anymore you like you cannot get any snow or whatever in those areas period good sounds about right sounds right even the, like the shattered savannah well yeah I, I i don't know for sure they didn't go over that and this is experimental yeah whether or not it's working correctly right now i don't know i know those shatter ones can get a high y level at times so well, I mean, they literally just says removed surface freezing for hot biomes. That's the note. Mm -hmm. But watching Sly Slime fly through the new snapshot, uh, if you guys haven't seen his video, it's like three and a half, four minute long, and it goes over everything in detail super quick, too, and gives great shots of the mountain terrain and everything like that. Yeah, it looks real nice. And I really like what they've done with the uh, the generations of different stones. Mm -hmm. Like they reduce the number of diorite, andesite, and granite blobs on the surface. It kind of gives it a more clean look. They're actually, well, there's actually more, I think, on the surface now. But they're laid out in a way where they're longer strips, more so than blobs. Yeah, they're not as blob, blob-like. <laughs> right. If that makes sense. So they, it looks way more natural. It doesn't look like, I think the phrase they use... Last time was someone was spray painting an area. Mm, yeah. It doesn't have that look to it. It's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. They also included calcite. Yes. To expose layers in the at least the mountain area. Right. And see, that was one of my talks that I loved calcite, but it did feel a little on the harder side to get. Not super hard because obviously you can find these geodes pretty easily mm -hmm. in 117. But limited. But it is a limited thing. Mm -hmm. So now that we're finding them in surface areas, I think you're going to see servers setting up quarry areas where you can dig out the calcite and stuff. Yeah, hopefully we can get traders that, you know, can yeah. trade you some calcite at least. That'd be nice. Yeah, that's how I've used most of my quartz this season is trading with villagers. Mm -hmm. I could see calcite becoming very popular. I mean, it already is, so. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful block. Be nice to find another way to use it or to get more. To me, it's a cleaner diorite. Yeah. I always saw it as, saw it as like a, a smooth di diorite, not so much as a polished. We have polished, but like a, a smooth diorite. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Extreme Hills, they made the terrain less unextreme. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that means, I guess more extreme would be the better way unless it it became less extreme after a snapshot so they had to make it more extreme from that i don't i don't know i i think it has to do with you know them raising the y level probably like it would be extreme extreme if they yeah. were to take it to that limit it would probably look crazy because i love building in extreme hills and mm -hmm. i can't tell you the amount of times i've traveled five thousand blocks for an extreme hills biome just to see that the tallest hill was 20 blocks tall. Mm. And it's like, that's not extreme. That 
That's a foothill. Yeah, hopefully we get bigger than that. Yeah. As someone who lives in the foothills, that's a foothill. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not very big. No, I mean, and so many biome tweaks. Like, swamps are now swampier. So the swamps were tweaked just a little bit, mainly to keep swamps from extending far out into the ocean. So they're kind of stay closer to the uh, shoreline. And the water levels in the swamps will be more shallow. So that'll be really nice now, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually you see them connected to rivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and along, along oceans. Yeah. So that's not, that's not a thing in real life? There's not too many connected to the ocean? They are, but they don't extend far out into the ocean. Oh, okay. That's what they mean. Yeah, ocean water kind of takes over. Right. Pushes the swamp back. Makes it more beachy. Yeah. Swampy. Plus, I think, I'm trying to remember my time in Florida, like, swamp water is mostly freshwater, I think. Yeah, it is. So you wouldn't have a freshwater swamp merging with a saltwater ocean. Right. Without some brackish water in between. Uh, it's weird enough. Anyways, you won't have that hard line 50 blocks out into the ocean where there's a swamp. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder, are they going to change river water color? Because remember, that's still like a bright blue when it runs through a swamp. Is it? Yeah, at least that's mm. the way I remember it. I haven't been in a swamp much this season. I was right along a river and a swamp, but I never, I don't know, never really looked at it now that you mention. I have to go take a look and see if that's the case. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I thought like once the river flowed into the swamp area, it was swampy water. Mm. But I could be wrong. I think it does make sense, you know, rivers colliding with swamps. Pretty sure that's how that works in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, they've reworked uh, microbiome uh, collisions and all that kind of stuff. So no more, or I should say less, microbiomes were a, a cure. They were working on that last time, uh, and they worked on it again this time. So there's that. Uh, badlands and deserts are larger and less likely to show up as microbiome uh, splotches terracotta bands obviously go higher now because of the raised y level and woodland or wooded badlands grass trees start higher so making room for more blocks mm -hmm. yeah it's always annoying when you dig out terracotta and you want the plain terracotta mm -hmm. and there's just so many different layers of colors that you're never going to use you gotta <laughs> yeah. dig around them so hopefully they widen the regular terracotta layers out. That's that's one of the reasons I've always been a fan of hermit crafts. Like any terracotta can be dyed aspect. It makes a lot of sense for a server, especially a server like them who uses an absolute ton of blocks and stuff. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. Imagine if everyone needed a terracotta and you had you could only dye that one kind of terracotta. They'd be out in no time. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. As much as they use. Uh, second to last item is more iron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly where iron spawns now, or is going to spawn, but there's, there's the blob sizes are bigger. Yeah, I believe you find that, you can find that in, what is it, andesite strands? Is it andesite? Uh, I haven't heard iron connected to anything. I know copper is going to be granite. In the granite, and iron's in something. I want to say it's in andesite, because it's not in diorite. Oh, that reminds me, I missed something. Copper blobs are now going to be in dripstone caves also. Mm hmm Bigger copper blogs. Blobs. Jeez. Yeah. Words. So you can, you can get copper pretty much everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, you find a dripstone cave, you're going to get a good bit of copper. You can farm it from the, uh, the drowned. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because we have our ores dropping as raw ores now, we're getting a lot of each ore. And you all, you already got a bunch of iron. Now they're giving you more. So yeah, I think they're kind of offset the iron farm and how easy it is to create. Right. Yeah, I was just gonna say that there's gonna be less iron farms. I bet. Not me. I'm gonna have an iron farm. <laughs> yeah. I'm, if you don't mine as much, if you do mining, I bet one mining session you're coming out with a good five stacks of iron. That's if you do it. All my farms are based around the fact that I just don't have the time to grind for uh, blocks. So if I can make a farm that keeps me from having to grind, mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Iron farms are fun, though. They are. They're a good time. But I do mine a lot, so I might 
don't know. Might go without the iron farm. We'll see. Uh, the big update. Like, this is one of the bigger changes that I am absolutely in love with in this update. And it's reduced the likelihood of rivers being cut off and turning into steep, dry river gorges. Instead, they're going to end up cutting fjords through mountain range or raise the terrain to form saddle valleys between the peaks. It looks so good. Trying to think of where this part was. <laughs> I can't think of that spot. Uh, it's hard for me. I can just tell you, uh, if you wanted an example of what it was like beforehand, my season two base, you know the back bridge that went to where my tree chopping area was? Yeah. Half of the bridge covered a river, and then it went into this dry riverbed. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having to cut out a lot of it and fill it with water by hand to make it a complete river. Okay. So now we're not going to get that as much. We're going to get actual rivers. Yeah. Going through mountain areas. Okay. Yeah, they a lot of them cut off. Yes, they do. It's annoying when you're trying to boat around and you can't get through because the river stops. Yes. You go another five blocks and put down your boat again, jump back in the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it always seemed unnecessary. Yep. That's a good fix. It really is. And it's a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the video we watched, they did have shaders. He did have shaders on. Yes. Made it look really nice. But I'm, I'm really enjoying all the new changes in the experimental updates. Mm -hmm. I still want to see it for myself, though. Still have to get it. I gotta play Minecraft first, you know, to Yeah. Well, actually you gotta play Dungeons now. So Yeah, oh man, what am I gonna do so much? <laughs> you're already three levels behind me. Oh my you're that you're level three? Uh actually I'm level four. No. Oh. But I've only played three levels. I ended up going back and playing the first or Creeper Woods, I think is what it's called, like three times, trying to find all the loot or whatever. Until I realized that they probably block off parts of the map based on difficulty, and then I should just come back later. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right there. Yeah. But let's go into listener comments, because we've got two comments we're going to share with you guys today. Uh, I have a comment from the Firster. Am I reading that right? The Firster? That's the Discord name. Yeah. They asked, do you think that Minecraft's music is missing in some areas, especially in the most climatic moments in the game, like beating the Ender Dragon? Or will new, more complex music that fleshes out missing areas will take away from the classic nostalgia? It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I could see where after beating the dragon, you would like some kind of uh, climatic movement or music. The problem is, is getting that trigger that plays the music. Yeah. Because Minecraft is such a huge sandbox that anything can be done at basically any time. So to be able to cue music at certain points would get a little tough. Right. Yeah, I was just thinking music while fighting the Ender Dragon could give you more of a, I don't know, a, of a rush mm -hmm. while fighting the dragon. Then again, there are times where you got to fight the dragon over and over and over to open up end gates, and it could possibly get annoying. Yep. And like you said, sometimes you're not there to fight the dragon. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you're there to go out into the end, and if you go in, you start hearing that music. It doesn't really relate to what you're doing. So, yeah, you're, yeah. You, there's like a trigger that needs to be pulled for certain times when music needs to play. I think right now they just have, you know, while you're playing, it randomly plays, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, see, I don't know, because as YouTubers, I turn the music all the way off. Yeah, same here. Because I have to put my own music over that during the episode so most of my background music in my episodes is minecraft music but because of editing and chopping and recording and stuff the music won't line up so you have to put music over top of what would already be game music yeah when you're making a video there's nothing more annoying than something completely cutting off like if you were playing the game mm -hmm. you hear the music in the background and you cut one thing, you're cutting a piece of that music, which is really noticeable. It's going to be noticeable in a video. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe maybe that's part of it too. Maybe they you know, include the video makers or the creators when they think about putting in music. The only thing I could think of as a way to change it for the better 
would be if you watch Decoy's All I Never Did series, he has music specific for locations. Mm -hmm. And that's really good. But Decoy is really good at making music. So the music fits the location like flawlessly. It all feels natural. Right. I would love something like that. But again, as I'm recording and making YouTube, I have to turn my music off anyways. Yeah, I wish I could make music like that. <laughs> That'd be nice. All right, but next question is from Fragile Rock. They ask, what tool or object do you think is useful but underutilized, either because you forgot or are not in the habit of using or crafting? For me, it's Ender Pearls. Um, me personally, it's potions. Yeah. Potions done right are extremely OP, but I don't... I think I have one brewing stand in my base right now, and it's never been used. Yeah, it's kind of a time and a place. Yeah. You use potions. You know, you got to plan for potions. For me, I think it's shields. Yeah, shields are another one. Yeah, I always forget that I could use a shield to block, you know, any projectile. And uh, I think I die from a skeleton with my first death almost every season, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, a shield definitely gets major uses early in the season for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that I basically carry around the Totem of Undying and the Aha uh Fan, -huh not so much. Yeah. Honestly, a shield is probably way more useful than a totem, but I have so many totems, <laughs> it wouldn't make sense for me not to. Yeah, and you kind of, you don't need a shield running around your base if you right. spawn proofed any, everything. You know, you should be relatively safe. Mm -hmm. I, Ender Pearls used to be a thing where I never used them, never realized it. I use them all the time. Yeah, this base I had this season made it so much easier to get around with Ender Pearls because of all the different levels and building up high and low. Mm -hmm. Kind of got used to them. Always have at least 16 on me, unless I start using them. But they're easy to get. They're easy to come by. Oh, yeah. But yeah, thank you for the comments, the Firster and Fragile Rock. Those comments were from our Discord, and our Discord is the only place you can submit questions for upcoming guests. Here's Laura from Mojang with more information. Hello, everyone. My name is Laura, and I'm a senior game designer in the Minecraft Dungeons team. And I'll soon be joining Dots and Jimbo in one of their future episodes. If you join the Withering Effect Discord, which you can do by going to the link in the show notes, you can submit any questions you might have for me. Get your questions ready by Friday, August the 27th, and the best ones will be answered on the show. So. I'm very ready to answer all of them. See ya. Thanks for that, Laura. We can't wait to have you on our future episode. Remember to get your questions in about Minecraft Dungeons in our Discord. Speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in the Mending Minecraft vote. This week, we asked you to choose between one of three mobs for us to discuss. Your choices were Butcher, Dolphin, and Slime. And the winner of many Minecraft this week is Slime. Yeah. Slime won with 35 votes, actually. Butcher had 18, Dolphin with 14. Mm -hmm. A few things on the Slime. It's actually, Slime's pretty unique. Pretty unique mob. Yeah. Slimes are bouncy cube-shaped hostile mobs that spawn deep underground in particular chunks or at night in swamp biomes. There are specific locations in the overworld where the slimes spawn called slime chunks, where slimes spawn below Y40 regardless of light level. Also in swamps at low light levels between Y levels 50 and 70. It's near the surface. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be nighttime. just depends on the light level. And I think, it doesn't say here, but uh, when the moon is full, I think you get more spawns. If I'm not mistaken. I think I've heard that too, but I'm not sure. Yeah, at least that's what I was told. Didn't see that on the wiki. I don't know. Didn't really look for it. Uh, slimes come in three different sizes. Uh, large, medium, or small. Also measured the sizes from one to three, three being the largest. When slime larger than one dies, it spawns two to four new slimes, equivalent to its size divided by two. Rounding down, a slime that has, was named with the name tag produces smaller slimes with the same name when it dies. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it kept the name. I knew that. I had no idea. 
Uh, if a slime size is one, it drops zero to two slime balls. This can be increased by one per level of looting for a maximum of, of uh, slime, uh, slime balls. For a maximum of five slime balls. There we go. It's a tongue twister. Not really. But that's all I got. Yeah, so mending the slime was actually more fun this week uh, than the last couple weeks. Last couple of weeks, we seem to have been choosing mobs that really had no way of being mended without creating something new. This week, we can. They won't be like super different in any way, but I think we could have some fun with slimes. Now, I want to start out by saying slime chunks kind of suck. Mm. They're great for farming. Don't get me wrong. Slime farms are incredibly OP and awesome because of slime chunks. That being said, as someone who built a base underground and had slime constantly spawning in his base until he half slabbed everything, they kind of suck. Yeah. That being said, one of the uh, discussion channel mentions, I forget who mentioned it, talked about a slime cave instead of a chunk, which I really enjoyed. To me, that seems like a better fix. Obviously, we're not talking about fixing slime chunks. We're talking about fixing slime. But it was such a good idea, I wanted to at least mention it. There's that. But one of the fixes for the slime is I'd love to see different colored slime, maybe based on the biome they spawn in. The slime could be colored coordinated to that area. Yeah. They don't have to act different. They can just be slime. But the ability to drop different colored slime balls or just have different color slime in general. Like I said, all of it can function exactly the same. But just the fact that you can catch different colored slime and put them in a, a windowed box and watch them bounce around seems really fun to me. Yeah. Uh, another idea I had is slime should have a fear. Like hoglins and piglins, they're scared of the warped mushroom or whatever it's called, fungi. Maybe slime has and something like that it's scared of. Maybe it's like sand. Maybe maybe slime doesn't like sand or gravel or some gravity falling block because of the next thing I have. What if slime could jump on an item and it would suck the item up? Kind of like how if a zombie walks over a loose item, it can pick it up and carry it. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, so a slime would jump on a loose item and it would pick it up and you could see it like inside the slime. And then whenever you would kill the slime, it would end up dropping the item. Yeah, it wouldn't despawn either with the item in it. Correct. So if a slime were to jump over sand and gravel, it would be like, oh, now I'm covered in sand. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stupid. And these weren't going to make the slime super different or super cool. But they were just like fun little things I would love to see happen to slime. Yeah, make it even more derpy. Exactly. Than it is already. Slime is one of my favorite looking mobs in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not a special looking mob, but it's such a great, creative, derpy looking mob. Yeah, that face. It's like the Strider. Everyone's like, the Strider's ugly, but it's so ugly, it's cute. Mm -hmm. And that's the way slime are to me. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Oh, I know I'm right. They didn't look like a hostile mob. No, they don't. They look like, you know, something you could cuddle with. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, they're not that nice. No, they're not. In fact, the big ones are actually, they hit pretty hard if you're not careful. Yeah, I've been killed by slime. Mm hmm. You know, I'm looking for the slime caves real quick. It was Agent Paint. There we go, Agent Paint. Yes. Uh, mention some kind of new cave biome. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's not a bad suggestion. No. Yeah, I was looking for it. As soon as you mentioned it and you didn't know the name, I was like, I better find out who that is because I kind of like it. I was going to be like, Jimbo, go find it, but I didn't want to sound like I was being bossy or anything. Oh, I was, I'm on it. I was on it. Awesome. But that's all I have for slime, unless you have something, Jimbo? Or I was going to suggest a different color slime, actually. Oh, there we go. You, I see you had it on your notes. Uh, them being biome specific would be a great way to make them different colors. I was thinking they could spawn different colors, or possibly... The slime blocks, even though it's not technically the slime, but uh, make those, you know, dieable, but it's not technically the mob. Yeah, I mean, how cool would it be? Again, doesn't change the functionality of a slime block at all. You just can change it to whatever color you want. Mm -hmm. 
granted that adds like 16 new blocks to the game right you gotta watch out for that but yeah all right should we move into our main topic sure our main topics coming from king b dog's twitter that seems to be where we get a lot of our topics lately Mm -hmm. but he had put out a tweet asking if you could choose would you prefer to flesh out the deep dark as a biome or the warden as a mob which one was more important to us and before we go any deeper than this then you gotta play on words there deeper than the deep dark yeah yeah, I'm, i'm i'm using my words perfectly this time we don't know enough about either one of them to really give a good solid answer. I'll put out there. Yeah. Everything can change with the more information we know. As of right now, I think we know more about the Warden than we do the Deep Dark. Right. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Warden. I want to see the Warden. I want to fight the Warden. You know, I want to interact with it. I want to know what it does, what its mechanics are. Does it respawn? It's just, it's unique. You know, it, it doesn't see, it can only hear mm-hmm. from the vibrations. I want to see it so bad. But as saying that, I would rather have the biome just because of all the new blocks, the new look. I want to feel the deep dark, you know, not just see it, but feel the way it's made. Mm-hmm. Then again, it wouldn't be as dangerous without the warden. Yeah. I'm going to go out there before I say my answer that other than the skulk blocks, I don't think the deep dark is going to bring any new blocks that we have seen, haven't seen yet. So I don't think we're going to get much newer other than skulk. But being said, I would also choose biome mm-hmm. just because to me, once you faced a mob five, 10 times, the fight becomes super routine when it comes to Minecraft. Yeah. The only time it doesn't become routine is when you get swarmed by hordes of mobs. And it doesn't look like you're going to fight a horde of Warden. Yeah, or that first fight, that first interaction. Yeah, but once you get past that, it's the same. So unless you're going to be farming Warden, which as of right now, they're not dropping anything. So it's really not worth it to kill the Warden. It's more worth it to sneak around. But we don't know what we're sneaking around for. Obviously, if I'm going to go sneaking around the deep dark with this big giant guy who can smash my face into many pieces, there got to be some good loot there. And honestly, other than in cities, a lot of these areas for loot are not worth the hassle. Yeah. But the deep dark has a chance to be a more fleshed out area. And even, how do I put this? Every area or every temple, every biome and stuff... It, it all changes with world generation. So they're never identical. The structure itself might be identical, but some of it might be buried. Some of it might not be buried. Part of it could be floating. And if this is an actual biome instead of a structure, it's going to be even more tweaked based on generation. So that means every time you go into the deep dark, it's different, which to me is way more interesting than fighting the same mob for the hundredth time. Mm-hmm. I would like to see larger deep dark areas like yeah like, like you you are going to run into one mm-hmm. at y5 or what is it negative 60 or however low it goes the lowest till you get to the bedrock area well and that's just it we we don't know for sure we don't mm-hmm. know enough about the deep dark we only seen a little piece of the deep dark mhm it was like one little corner actually <laughs> A little looting area. Everything right now is an experimental snapshot. Anything can change. Everything could change. Yeah, as of right now, in the ground we have our mine shafts. You might run into a, uh, what is it, where the end is? Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I forgot. Stronghold. I, ke- I keep forgetting the name of it too. The stronghold. There's not... I don't know, there's not much to explore besides caves, unless you run into something like that. Mm-hmm. The deep, uh, it'd be nice for the deep dark to be an extension of something to explore, you know, that has branches of it. And I don't know, like I said, I, I would like to see it bigger. Yeah. If possible. <laughs> don't make it one hallway, is what you're saying. Yeah, I don't want like a strip of a biome down there. I don't think it is. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be like a maze. You're going to have to try to find your way around. 
that's yeah that's the way i would like it to be Mm -hmm. now having said that it'd be nice like the warden if he could attack you think it would be this way if it would attack any mob that you know made vibrations it looked like it didn't attack the spiders if i'm not mistaken i think it was spiders that were crawling around it didn't really get aggro over but it would be nice to use for farming capabilities and mechanics if the warden would attack other mobs that made vibrations. It could be way more useful in that way. I think they're going to. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah, the vibration has to be over a certain level, I think. Because they, remember, they were playing with Skulk Sensor vibration levels or whatever. They're going to, they use a different word than vibrations. But I think that's what's going to happen. Because I was like, well, the way I would attack a warden is go in there with a bunch of chicken eggs and start chucking them around wherever I don't want to be. Yeah. And that's how I'd get around the warden. Yeah, they mentioned snowballs. Anything. Yeah, anything. That could make a vibration. But I think we're on the same page where we'd rather have a biome than a mob. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think it would be the same without the warden. No. It wouldn't be as dangerous. No, I'm not saying get rid of the warden at all. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you were going to put, if you said, all right, I only have, let's use a stupid number. Let's use five hours. I have five hours to work on this biome and the warden. I'm going to put two hours into this and three hours into that. Which one gets the three? I would hope it's the biome. Yeah, that's the way I was I was going. To me, biomes change everything. They're not going to be the exact same. Uh, finding hiding spots from wardens based on Terrain generation is going to be big. Yeah, and uh, what we know of right now, you know, these deep, dark areas, there are little cave openings with your loot chests. Uh, we don't know what's in the chests. We know there are, you know, candles scattered about. So it is, mm-hmm. there is some kind of life down there or used to be. Uh, I don't see the warden going around placing candles. Maybe there's some lure of the candles, but it is like a dim lit place. Kind of hoping they implement the zero light level spawns. You know, it has to be zero instead of seven. I have a feeling you're going to see mob spawning underneath a certain Y level cut off. Because remember, they're changing how mob are spawning right now. Mm -hmm. Making a mob farm closer to zero doesn't help increase rates anymore. Right. So you can put the mob farm anywhere. And I have a feeling they're doing that because like, all right, under Y negative 25, Nothing spawns there unless it's a warden. I was just going to mention that. You imagine going into the deep dark, there being a warden, also 20 other mobs, because it's so dark. The warden would be, he'd be occupied. Yeah, he'd just get distracted. Uh Uh-huh. So I don't think they're going to want that. I think they're going to want just you versus the warden, and it's your job to outsmart it. Yeah, you could be right there. Or maybe, you know, the candles are a little more abundant. Maybe they do try to light it up a little bit more, have less spawns, or maybe just make it very rare at the bottom that they spawn. Don't know. Ah, It's still up in the air. We just don't know yet. Yeah, we just don't have enough information. Uh, It's a great opinion uh, tweet to put out there. I want to say the last time I checked on it, 85% of people agreed with me and you, and it was do the biome over the warden. Yeah. How many of those people were choosing that because we know such little about the deep dark? I don't know. But as someone who plays the game for hours upon hours upon hours, years on years on years, mobs get super tiring and super repetitive relatively quickly. Once I have full gear, unless it's a giant horde, or I do something incredibly stupid. I'm not dying to a mob. Yeah. Now, obviously, don't get me wrong. The Warden's a completely different beast. It could basically knock you out in one hit. But once you figure out how to beat a Warden, I'm sure you're just going to keep doing that same way to beat it over and over again. Like, it's the reason we cheese Withers Mm -hmm. and all that stuff nowadays. It's like, yeah, you do one Wither fight naturally, and then after that, forget that. We're going to put his head in bedrock, and we're going to get the Nether Star so we can move on. Yeah, or Endermen. Or (laughs) Endermen. Endermen are pretty easy to take care of. Yep. I died to Endermen so many times in my storage room before I realized I could just stand in the lake in the middle of my storage room and hit their ankles and call it done. Mm Mm-hmm. See? Unless I'm incredibly stupid, (laughs) the mob won't kill me. 
you know, I was I was just thinking, you know, well, maybe they give Warden a weakness like that. Here, the guy can't see, so that's probably the weakness. <laughs> Blind. I mean, maybe the weakness is it doesn't like bright lights. Yeah. So what if you start lighting things up? Or rabbits. <laughs> or rabbits. It does have a thing for rabbits. Maybe it really hates bees. That'd be funny. Oh, so you're basically saying the Warden's a giant Jimbo. Yeah, it's like a giant Jimbo. <laughs> it's a Jumbo Jimbo. They can't see. It's just like the normal Jimbo, right? Yeah, I'm partially blind, so. <laughs> but I don't get around on vibration. I just pictured you going into the deep dark, facing a warden face to face, and you both go, brother? Give him, I'll give him a big hug down there. <laughs> he took care of all the bees. I'm sure he would give you a big hug too and squish you against the ceiling. I hope it attacks bees so I can use it. You and the hatred for bees, man. I'm gonna find. There's got to be a mob that's gonna take care of the bees for me, so I don't have to. Eventually, it's called water. Yeah, that's not a mob. No, but it, it'll take care of the bees for you. I need a companion. Oh man. Okay. Before this goes any further, I think that's gonna do it for today's show. <laughs> before I have Jimbo read us out, I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our milk level patrons are Obni, Chief Big Bear, Croc, Dead Walker, Fragile Rock. Obeep, Stone Figure, and Viperous Tuna. If you too would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash the withering effect. And if you like the show, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, follow us, or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at the withering effect.com. Tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links will be in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer, Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be. The amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. Thank you guys so much. You've been awesome. Thanks for getting with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys.